So there I was, I put together this amazing pitch, like this pitch was flawless, man, I could literally improve this person's life by so much, I had an answer to every single question they had, I had a solution to every single problem that they had, and they still hit me with that infamous objection, this objection is probably something that you're hearing most often right now, and that objection is, hey, everything sounds great and all, but let me go ahead and put some thought to it and I'll give you a call back if I decide to move forward. You ever hear that? Does that sound familiar to you? We're probably hearing it more often now because the savings is so minimal. The impact is so minimal. And we got to get more and more creative because we have a biased opinion being on our side of the table as salesmen that and our comp being directly tied to their decision. That of course, we're going to look at it with kind of a silver lining, right? Like, well, look, well at least it's savings, boo-boo. <laughs> you know, we, got, we don't, don't we? And, and, and we can't help but feel the emotional discouragement of investing our time because you and I, we're not there for the base, right? You and I, we're not there for the hourly. No, 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 no. We're there for the commission rips and the bonus tiers and the income levels that we have the opportunity to reach. And of course, we want to do good by others. And this is, this is something that I'm going to cover in this video because if you're having issues right now with getting with getting the the pitch out right and what we believe should have gone through or even if we don't right just any pitch in general is getting hit with the objection from the prospect of ah let me go ahead and think about it and then they go ghost nowhere to be found right they're not answering your text messages your your sms posts they're not answering your phone calls your emails you can call with your number block they're not they don't want nothing to do with you well, do you want to know how to fix that? Do you want to know a slight adjustment that you can implement today to create the urgency, desire, and the need for your service, the need to buy from you right now? This technique, if you absorb the message and really understand what I'm trying to get through to you, I guarantee you're going to pick up some extra business this week. Let's go. My team came from the bottom on the rise, yeah God, please don't get me lost in this ride, yeah Went to sleep, I had a dream of that fish scale So go then put it right on the street at retail What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered My name is Daniel and I'm your host And on this episode, we're going to talk about The art of creating urgency The art of creating need For the services that you provide The services that you give The the desire that it takes for our prospects and our leads to give us their full attention, to give us their time of day. And I'm gonna share with you a slight adjustment that I made when I noticed something. I noticed that when I was presenting it, presenting it by it, I mean the pitch and my, you know, my, my sales pitch. And I found that prospects, for whatever reason, they just kept saying they want to think about it, right? Even though I felt and I understood that I was achieving every single goal that this person just told me that they had. When I believed that I had the perfect rebuttal to every objection that they had, still, I couldn't get them to act now. And not until I made this adjustment, and I'm going to share this adjustment with you, but first, let me go ahead and explain why this little adjustment works. And let me know if you could relate. If you can, don't forget to comment below. Maybe timestamp the section in this video that you like most. And, and let the community know what your takeaway was. But let me go ahead and explain to you. Let me give you an example that you're going to understand. If you've ever gone to a restaurant, which I'm sure you have, right? And you, you know, you go, you're going through the menu. And a typical place, let's use like, I don't know, like uh, Lucille's, Lucille's Barbecue House, right? Or, you know, even maybe your favorite restaurant. When you go through the menu, you're going to notice that the menus in them, the menu itself has an explanation of the item, you know, and also pictures. And sometimes we as consumers and, and guests to this restaurant, we can be influenced most by the the options that have a picture by it. <laughs> I'm that way. I don't like uh, you know picking an item unless I can see what it looks like. 
right? But also, I want you to pay attention to that, I besides the picture of the item, you're gonna notice that they have a specific name for that item, right? Like, uh, mama's favorite ribs or whatever, and some sort of name to classify. They could have called it just pork ribs, <laughs> right? They could have called it the same name that they, that they use when they go buy it from the butcher. I want you to think about that. And then, besides the name, they have an explanation of how, you know what the dish includes, right? But if you read the print, you're gonna notice that it's very short, very brief, and, and gives you nothing but just what you need to know, right? It doesn't tell you how they cook it, because if they told you how they cook it, they told you every specific detail, the, every single menu item would be damn near half a page. So they just keep it summarized, they keep it, you know, straight to the point. Now besides the name and the precise information, not too much info information, but just the important pieces, the pieces that will influence you to choose that item, then they talk about the price. Make sense? So, so beside, now when you add all these things together, this becomes what, we, what I call pre-framing. And I released a video last week of a recorded call that I had where I did a sales presentation and I think it it explains it in, in detail. It actually gives you a great example of how to pre-frame. I'm framing the call. You ever heard that word framing? Framing is basically just basically preparing. It's, pre it's preparing the prospect to be in a position where they're going to absorb your pitch but also want it like you created this emotional sense of urgency of desire of of want and you've 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 hit different points of their different emotions that influence decision you see before any decision can be made there has to be a motive right a motive is some people confuse motive with interest interest is just is just attention but there has to be a motive. A motive is basically, if you think about someone has a problem, they also have a motive. Every, every problem has a motive. And it's a, basically a motive to solve that problem. And this is why advertisements today spend millions of dollars in marketing. It's not because they understand that they, they, they can market, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna get everyone, but you know who they will get? The people who, who give their attention, that's the interest and have motive at the exact time that they see that advertisement. And so if we use the example that I just gave of us going to a restaurant and we, you know, we, we have this motive, our motive is because we're hungry or because we want pork ribs, we'll notice that we are pre-framed by the restaurant by having succulent pictures, right, of, of the dish as well as a catchy name, as well as a summary of what's included in the dish and then we learn of the price. Make sense? So I want you to pay attention to that order because in so many ways, the pitch, and I'll leave a, a link below this video of that live recorded call, it's ultimately the way I adjusted my pitch that created the desire to act now. And so let me give you the reason why it worked is because when I was doing a pitch and I found that I was getting that objection of, oh yeah, let me go ahead and think about it. I noticed that those pitches were because it was very general statements. It was very vague, right? In other words, I was using the name that I could have got it from a butcher, right? Like if we use the example of the pork ribs. Instead of calling it mama's special pork ribs or giving it some classy name, basically what I was doing, I was just, bas I was just using very vague statements like, oh yeah, I got ribs. Let me, let me elaborate. So when I was talking to my prospects, instead of saying, I can, I can pay off your Visa, your Discover, and your MasterCard that you're currently paying $600 per month each, which, equivalents, which equivalates to $1,800. Instead of saying that, which is precise and direct to the person that I was pitching, I was saying, hey, I could pay off these three credit cards and save you money. <laughs> Make sense? Or I was saying very vague statements of, hey, I, you know, I'm gonna help you pay off your credit cards. What does that mean, bro? <laughs> right? And what I noticed was that when I started 
looking at sales in a different way and I really understood the components of of the of marketing, selling and closing. I understood now that those were three different things. And more importantly, I understood that interest and motive are two different things and I have to find those two pieces in order to pull them to put them into the funnel, the funnel of the marketing, the selling and the closing. You see, I think I think most sales are being lost right now because the entire pitch is marketing. Let me let me explain. Marketing is when you're when all you're talking about is your company. Marketing is when and all you're talking about is your price or what makes you unique or what makes you special. Selling is solving. Selling is is in my opinion serving. Why? is because you're serving a solution. And the reason why selling needs to be done during the pitch is because selling is all about the prospect. That's what I mean by serving. You're focused on your prospect. And how do you do this? How you do this is you speak their language. You use their words. You apply the solution to them ex specifically. So instead of saying, hey, I can help you lower your payments, right? That's very vague. That's marketing. <laughs> instead, you can be creative enough to say, hey, I had an idea. I can bring your total payment, which you told me is X. I could bring it down to here. And this is how. Check this out. I'm going to help you remove the $600 payment you pay towards Discover, the $600 payment you pay towards the Visa account, and then the $600 you pay towards your MasterCard. And so by doing this, I'm going to help you increase your FICO score, replenish your bank account because you mentioned that you just went on vacation or, or position you so that you have a memorable holiday season because you told me you got three kids. You also shared with me that your income slightly went down because overtime hours are lower. Or you shared with me, you guys just had a baby, congratulations, I got some good news for you. I can create savings which is going to offset the loss of income or the Your decline in income. On the right. <laughs> My car got these senses, right, where if I do hand gestures in front of it, it's it, it picks up these gestures like I'm telling it what to do. Anyway. Just this case in point, right? I did a very vague gesture. I, I, I'm, all I'm doing is motion, but my car read something different. My car thought it was something else. And I think that in itself is a direct tie to the message here is we understand our language. We understand the message that we're trying to deliver. And sometimes we forget to break it down to, to simple format where just like I explained, if the restaurant gave it just a very bland name right like like uh like ribs that's it <laughs> and then and then went super hyper detail into the explanation or the the kind of the contents of the dish and went too much into information or didn't give enough information there's still questions that need to be answered right so you probably overlook it or or even better if it didn't have a picture, if the menus just didn't have a picture, you'd be like, hmm, right? You see, there are fancy restaurants that don't have pictures on their menus, but those are the same restaurants that print their menus on paper. So there's this exclusivity. And you, those places typically only have maybe five items that you could choose from anyway. And I'm talking about that's it, you know, and, and, and they're pretty much known. Like, so if you, you know, if you're affluent, in that area and you you go to one of these fancy restaurants they don't need pictures boo boo like trust you can pick any item on there you're gonna get good quality but when you go to one of these very general places that most of our consumers are used to going to they're used to having menu items that give pictures they're used to having a quick synopsis that speaks directly to them so what can we learn from that what we can learn from that is when we're when we preframe our consumers to want what we serve what we serve we'll have a better chance of completing that transaction because subconsciously this is how our consumers operate they operate like this all day long every day they just don't realize it. 
And so it's it all it is is adapting to the process that our consumers are already mostly comfortable with. You see, if in our pitches we're using verbiage and language and wordplay that only we understand, if we're using verbiage, wordplay, and language that that only we use, right, in our industry, like LTV, DTI, AUS, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, <laughs> right, 30-year conforming, whatever it is, you have to be empathetic and understand how it's being received. You see, some people will hear words and they'll become intimidated because they don't know what you're talking about. You ever been, you ever been in that type of environment where people are talking about things that you they're just completely over your head? What do you do? You kind of shut off and you and you you mute it out, you muffle it out, you start daydreaming. And so, what do you think your prospects are doing when you're talking about information that is very vague, general, or yet hard to understand? They're muffling you out and they're daydreaming. They're wondering how they can. How, you know what they got to do that day and so that's why at the time of of going in for the close they're like you know what i got to think about it what they mean is they have no idea what you meant what you said they have no idea how it applies to them so if you want to create the interest and desire what you have to do is speak to them you have to look at selling as serving as giving the solution that is just strictly tailored for them you are now the tailor and you are making them a perfect fit for their problem and you're not using fancy words right you're not using bland general words like ribs <laughs> i keep using that analogy but you get what i'm saying you use words that they understand you make it specific to them and because you're speaking to them they only see you as the solution to their problem because everyone else out there they're just speaking very vague general terms and when you can make it all about them inside your pitch as opposed to all about you, remove the marketing from your sales. Just remove it. Your, your sales pitch should be all about them. Listen, if you want to know more about these important ingredients, if you want to learn more about how to improve your, your delivery, your marketing, your sales pitching, your closing uh, ratios, if you want to learn more about the psychology and the art of selling, persuasing, persuasing, persuasion and influence, join me. Every Thursday, I have this live stream on YouTube from 8.30 to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you catch an episode, you know, get get on my list. Like if you haven't requested a copy of the sales script, the sales script that I told you about earlier, it's at salesremaster.com. At the very bottom of the website, there's uh, an opt-in box where you can request a copy of this free script. Use your personal email address. I can't stress that enough because if you if you if you use your business email address, chances are you're not going to get it. More importantly, you're going to miss 99% of the helpful information that I share with my community on these emails. There's content that I share on there that is not available anywhere online. There's content within these emails that no one gets unless you're on that that within that community, unless you're in that that group. And how do you get in that group? You go to salesremaster.com, go to the bottom of, of the website page, and request the copy of the sales script. For for your time being there and for you know, for joining that list, you're going to get something that's going to create a lot of value today, just like I hope that the content within this video is creating value for you today. So comment below. Let me know what your takeaway was. Don't forget to like the video. Subscribe. Hit that alert bell so you get notified of the content that I upload. And join me every single Thursday for the live stream, 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., where I speak specifically to salespeople that's going to be based on how you how you understand the nuances that basically push a lot of salesmen away and deteriorate their confidence and thus stops them from their full from reaching their full potential and i want to help you unlock yours i'll see you on the next video bye let me show you everything i know